Hello, and welcome to this episode of Let's Talk Careers. My name is Claudia Malad, and today we'll be featuring student success advisor, Farah Chanda Aslam. We'll talk about her path to becoming a student success advisor, and we'll also dive into her passion for equity, diversity, and inclusion, as well as supporting international students. I really hope you enjoy this episode. <music> Nice to see you again, Farah. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well. Um, can you please introduce yourself for, for the audience, your name, your role, and something you're currently passionate about? So my name is Farah Chanda Aslam, and I am the Student Success Advisor in the School of Interdisciplinary Studies at Conestoga College. Um, what I'm passionate about, I, I love learning and also crafting things. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> Great introduction. Um, so you know this episode of Let's Talk Careers is all about your career progression and how you got to where you are today. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. My first question for you is, can you tell me about your first paid job experience, either as a young person or just your paid um, employment experience? Uh, my first job was when I was 16 years old. I got it at the local mall in a gift shop. And what were some of the skills you had to use in that particular job? Definitely communication skills because it was uh, like I was a sales associate. So learning to, you know, approach the customers and sell the products um, and, you know, confidence, definitely putting yourself out there. Those are awesome. Great transferable skills that we always mention to our students, definitely. especially communication skills. It's the one universal uh, transferable skill that I always mention to students. Um, so from that, can you tell us a little bit more about your career journey? So how you got to where you are today? Yeah, so I was working at the mall and then I started university. I'm still working part time and I saw an opportunity online um, to work on campus. So I decided to apply and I was balancing both working at the mall, being a full time student and then a part time job on campus. And slowly I just transitioned into other departments on campus as well. And I have been in post-secondary ever since 2006. Okay. That's so, amazing. Yeah. And how was that experience balancing, I guess, two jobs and full-time academics? Do you remember? Oh, yes. Because I ended up working multiple part-time jobs throughout my undergrad and my graduate studies. Um, and it was definitely challenging, but very rewarding. I was motivated to continue working and studying. Uh, I developed a lot of skills and experience, uh, which I can say upon graduation, I had a resume mm -hmm. that was full. I also volunteered as well. Wow. So I know sometimes students feel that, you know, it's difficult to excel academically. But for me personally, I felt like balancing both gave me less time to procrastinate or mm -hmm. even just like waste time because I always had a jam packed schedule. Right. Right. So that experience really honed in your time management skills. Definitely, That's great. That's awesome. And thinking back to your younger days, do you remember what some of your childhood dreams were for employment and jobs? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, you might not believe this or know this about me, but I have always had a passion for like in crime and deviance. Okay. So I actually always wanted to be like an investigator. Okay. Um, my favorite shows growing up when I was little were um, Unsolved Mysteries and America's Most Wanted. Those were some scary shows. <laughs> Not for me though. For <laughs> me, it was like problem solving and critical thinking skills right. that I really, I think, developed following the cases. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. That's really interesting. And I was terrified of those shows yeah. as an FYI, <laughs> but okay. Let's dive a little bit deeper into your academic journey. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So I have my Bachelor of Arts in City Studies and Women and Gender Studies. I did a double major. I did my undergrad at the University of Toronto, but Scarborough campus. I lived in Scarborough at that time. And one of the main reasons why I chose that campus was because I did not want to move away from home okay. for affordability reasons. Yeah. I know that tuition was a lot of money and I wanted to be, you know, smart about managing my finances with tuition and 
uh, all the additional costs that come. And my commute was also much shorter. Mm -hmm. And that gave me that time that I saved on commuting. I put towards my part-time jobs and volunteering and getting involved on campus. Mm -hmm. And that was for your undergraduate degree. Yes. And then tell me a little bit more about your master's degree. What did you study and where did you go? Yes. So I decided to apply to UFT St. George, which is the downtown campus. And I, I applied to two programs, actually the master's in criminology Mm -hmm. and the master's in social work. Mm -hmm. Um, tying in my childhood interests of, you know, going into something crime and deviance related. Mm -hmm. But I decided to pursue the MSW because that can also be used to work in uh, police or investigative services. So I felt that it was more of a transferable program and there was more options that I could use to apply it in different areas. And um, also if I ever had to relocate, it's a transferable degree. Right. Right. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about your current role at Conestoga College? Yeah. Uh, So I'm a student success advisor and I have been in a similar position previously as well. So it's been quite a few years that I'm in this role. Um, And basically I support students' personal and academic success. And what that looks like, basically, I meet with students one on one or in group settings where I, you know, learn a little bit more about their academic journey. And of course, their academics are impacted by a lot of their lived experiences. You know, they're just not students. They are, uh, you know, sons and daughters. They are sometimes parents. Mm -hmm. Uh, They have a lot of responsibilities. They basically wear a lot of hats, right? Some most of them are working as well. Mm Um, and they're just, you know, trying to excel. Absolutely. I think you're probably the best person to do that from your own experiences, you know, balancing <laughs> multiple jobs and going to school at the same time as well. So that's amazing. And then can you tell me a little bit more about your, I guess, career trajectory to becoming a student success advisor? So we know about your university experiences and we know you're currently a student success advisor, but how did you get there? So that was one of the positions that I had while being a student. I did like I was an assistant to academic and career advising and I really enjoyed it. And in between, I did have other positions at different institutions as well. Like I did curriculum development. I also provided faculty with support. And then it just came back to me being a student advisor. I got the opportunity and I just realized that I was most passionate about working, especially with students Mm -hmm. one-on-one and supporting their success. So just so I know, because I don't really know much about student success advisors, when you say you've previously done curriculum advising as well as academic advising, what does that even entail? So a student comes to you, maybe they have a low GPA, then what happens? Yeah, so... If they have a low GPA, I, you know, get to know a little bit more context about what's going on, Mm -hmm. uh, where their interest is. Are there any environmental factors that are impacting their success? Sometimes it could be that they're stressed or, you know, they're struggling to manage working and going to school or there are issues at home. You know, it could be so many issues that impact or, or sometimes it's just that, you know, they need extra support. So based on whatever their challenges are, I can advise them on, you know, developing an academic plan within a specific class or all of the classes, uh, drawing on support of faculty or other campus resources. There's tutors, there's learning service advisors. There's a lot of workshops that take place as well. And many times students are just not aware, Mm -hmm. Um, especially when they're just caught up trying to just make it to class and Mm -hmm. keep up with the deadlines. So being that go-to person to support them and get an idea of how to manage the different stressors. Mm -hmm. And student success advisor, that doesn't just cover academics as well. So does that cover, say, maybe a student's living situation? Does it cover if there's a need for food? Like what else falls under the umbrella of student success advisor? So we definitely hear the narratives, right? And we can pick up on, you know, some of the challenges that the students are experiencing and that's where we can refer them. So for example, 
at Conestoga for students that international students that might have housing challenges. We have international transition coordinators that can support them in that realm. Okay. Um, there's also a food bank on campus as well, and also maybe exploring off-campus resources as well to support depending on what they're going through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We also have personal counselors. So depending on the student's situation, we can definitely refer them for personal counseling. I guess a key aspect of that job, just on how you're describing it to me, would you say active listening would be a big part of that job? Oh, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Active listening um, with the empathetic approach, mm -hmm. because many times students will come in to discuss one issue um, but then there's so many layers to it through, you know, hearing them out. Mm -hmm. uh, they realize that there are other challenges that sometimes are working simultaneously that uh, shape their experience and why they're there. And that way I can, you know, make connections and refer them to the different campus resources that can also support them. Which is, I'm sure, a great help because there are so many resources available and students may not necessarily know how to navigate that. Absolutely. Right. So you're the yeah. point person. So thank you for that. Yeah. That's awesome. What would you say you're most proud of in terms of your career? The first thing that comes to mind is that uh, I was able to achieve and complete my master's in social work. Uh, it was quite a long journey uh, for various reasons. I was also quite unwell during mm -hmm. my uh, graduate years, but um I, I'm very, I think, proud to say that I was able to complete it. So. Absolutely. Congratulations Thank on you. completing the MSW. Thank you. Um, I myself completed my master's degree while working full time. It's very challenging. Yeah. So we're on the other side of it. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to us. Thank you. Um, how would you describe this stage that you're in of your career right now? It's a juggling act. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a jam packed schedule. Uh, early mornings mm -hmm. and then late evenings. I do. I have a daughter. She is four. OK, uh, so I am very mindful of balancing my time between my work commitments and then my home life and also investing my personal time with her. So uh, definitely it's a juggling act, a juggling act. Would yeah. you say this is the stage? I completely hear you 110 percent. What would you say is your tips and techniques to balancing work and life. Okay. Yeah. So on a personal level, it's about being organized or trying to be organized. Mm -hmm. I forever have to-do lists of, you know, what's pending um, because our lives are filled of compartments, right? Like what's going on at work, what's going on at the home front, mm -hmm. what's going on with family, right? Um, so I have multiple um, to-do lists and mindful of deadlines. Um, also I would say having a supportive network, mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate and blessed to have a supportive family and spouse whom I can share my experiences with, um, and also kind of share the responsibilities with as well. Right. Um, and a third, I would definitely say boundaries. Like I mentioned, I try not to get consumed by one aspect of life. Having my daughter allows me to separate my time between mm -hmm. like work and home life so that I can try to strike like a healthy balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that, though, having things into various compartments or buckets, because that's exactly what it is. And yeah. like you said, they're all happening at the same time. Yeah. So focusing what's the priority at that given moment or time is Definitely. super crucial. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, what would you say is the most pivotal moment in your career thus far. So up until this point, what would you say was the most, I don't know, um, impacting moment of your career so thus far? Uh, I think through my various experiences, what I would say is most pivotal is that I was a part of a couple of research teams and I was able to, I was very passionate about the research topics and I was able to actually be a part of the publications and also present the research at conferences. So those stand out for me because it combined a lot of the skills that I was working on and developing and it all came together uh, during those times. That's beautiful. Do you mind telling me what one of the research topics were? Yeah. Um, so one of the projects that I worked on was for affordable housing. Okay. So looking at uh, 
options across Canada. So it's quite extensive research. Um, and I was able to be a part of the publication, the writing, and also I presented the research at the University of Calgary. Wow, that's great. And it's such a key issue that we're currently facing today, affordability Definitely. housing and the housing crisis. So yeah. thank you for that. That's amazing. Um, have you had a mentor or do you mentor others? What are your thoughts on mentorship? Oh, I think mentorship is very effective and important. Uh, one of the roles that I had many years ago was uh, developing a mentorship program for first generation students. And I, I did the research on that program and designed and developed it accordingly. And mm -hmm. I, I could see the benefits of it. I linked first generation students who were in first year with senior students. Mm -hmm. um, so that the mentorship was very helpful. And then we learned through the student narratives and experiences that they felt more of a sense of belonging. And they had that guidance that they needed or maybe weren't getting from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely mentorship is important. I, I think I, I, I would say I've mentored people. Um, I'm often told that I'm resourceful. So people reach out to me for support. Um, and because I have years of experience working in like academic and career advising, I think, you know, I've been able to advise people on their journeys after mm -hmm. graduation. And I, I think I, I am mentored by people that I look up to and connect with through my various uh, work experiences. And of course, like family yeah. is very important for my mentorship and uh, friends who are like family. Absolutely. No, that's awesome. And I think the role that you're in, just being a student success advisor, providing resources and opportunities to students is kind of mentorship. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll say that. Um, what are some of your current career goals? What are you looking to do in the very near future with your career? Well, I'm really enjoying my time at Conestoga as I see that there's there's a, a lot happening in the landscape of post-secondary, especially with international students. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's great space to, you know, make, make positive changes to support the student experience. Um, so I, I would love to be maybe a part of some research initiatives and, or actually facilitate some presentations on mm -hmm. relevant topics uh, for students and even faculty and staff. Mm -hmm. I think I would, uh, you know, like those opportunities. Yeah. And I'm sure the audience would benefit greatly from that. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what would you say is the main reason for choosing your industry, working in higher ed? So I know you mentioned earlier you've worked uh, part time while in school, but is yeah. that the reason why you chose to stay in post secondary, or what's the reason? I, I so I've always worked in post secondary, and I did have some pockets of time in my career where I worked for not for profit organizations, which I also really enjoyed. But I think that. Um, I enjoy working in post-secondary um, because it, I feel like all of the skills that I've developed are transferable in the post-secondary setting. So mm -hmm. like writing, research, advising, mentoring. Right. Um, so there's lots of opportunities and room for personal and professional growth. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think that I feel the most comfortable and confident working in post-secondary. I feel like just listening to your story and from what I know about you, it just fits, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Out of all the jobs you've done, what would you say is your favorite job in post-secondary? I've liked them all, but I think just the student success advising is most meaningful for me. Uh, it makes me feel that like happy that I can support students. And I learned this when they follow up with me they email me saying that, you know, we were able to resolve the situation or, you know, they were able to overcome whatever barrier they were experiencing. And, you know, that makes me feel like I'm there to support them and, you know, make maybe a small change. Absolutely. OK, that's awesome. Um, switching gears now, thinking about technology, and I know this is a very big topic, but what impact do you think artificial intelligence is having or will have? on um, post-secondary oh yes that's that's quite a, <laughs> it's a loaded topic. question yeah. yes and and i have these conversations weekly actually because it's 
really impacting academic integrity mm-hmm. amongst students, mm-hmm. especially students who are coming from different education systems right. and are not completely familiar with how these tools are not always, you know, um, helping their academic development. Right. So it's it's definitely a hot topic and a bit problematic. Yeah. You have to find ways to work with it because it is here to stay. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you have any advice for students if they wanted to get into post-secondary for work, part-time or full-time? Um, any advice or suggestions for how students would secure opportunities in post-secondary? Yeah, um, I think, well, it depends on the position that they're interested in because it's based on the industry. Right. But generally, if students are looking to get in, well, while they're a student, I would encourage them to explore on-campus opportunities, whether it's paid or unpaid. Mm -hmm. I also gained a lot of valuable experience while I was a student through volunteering on campus as well. So I got to be a part of great initiatives in different departments. Um, And that gave me more exposure and an idea of what department I enjoyed working in or Mm -hmm. would want to grow in. Mm -hmm. Um, But if it's after they've graduated or, you know, some an industry that they're considering, I I find in post COVID, if it's post COVID, (laughs) um, connecting with professionals through LinkedIn is really helpful. Okay, And now that we have like Virtual meetings has become more common in workplaces generally. I think having like coffee chats through like a virtual platform can help. And I know that many professionals are always willing to shed light on their journey. And uh, that's been effective in, you know, maybe having an informational interview or, you know, getting a inside insider's perspective on what it's like to work in the institution or a specific department. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So networking, I think, is key Definitely. for that, for sure. And I think that applies to any industry, not just post-secondary. But yeah. yeah, great advice there. Thank you for that. Um, but look, thinking about your uh, role in particular, what would you say hiring managers look for in your position? Um, well, definitely, I think they want to have that. They want to see that experience, advising experience, direct contact mm-hmm. with students. Um, and of course, like seeing that you have that coaching experience. Okay. Uh, because you have to meet the student where they're at. Mm-hmm. And again, it's not just that we're sharing generic policies with all the students, or it's always like an individualized approach that, you know, we take to manage case by case. So um, a communication right. is a very important. Uh, and, and that includes like verbal communication, email communication. Mm-hmm. In, in my position, you know, I talk th- things out with students, but also regularly do e-advising. Okay. And making sure that, you know, there's clarity and... Um, understanding that language can be a barrier Mm -hmm. for some students, especially if they're, if English is not their first language. Okay. Okay. No, that's great. So transferable skills, mainly communication skills and having that one-on-one advising experience, I think would be key. Okay. Perfect. Um, What would you say a typical day looks like for you? I know it's hard to say a typical day when you work with students, um, but any, I guess, generalities about your days at work? Yeah. uh, Well, Usually I have students that are booked up in my calendar, so it can, I always review them in advance for the day to get an idea of what students are coming through and what type of concerns they have. Of course, there's um, e-advising in between as well as our email is always full, like Mm 24-7, even though we have our specific work hours. Um, And in between, it depends. Sometimes there's professional development sessions that we're attending or teams meetings or working group meetings. So it just it's kind of a mix. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So no two days are exactly the same being a student success. (laughs) Okay, okay, But that's what makes it exciting. Exactly. Right. Who wants the monotony of the same thing every single day? Um, What are some skills you would say you're currently developing right now? Uh, Well, I think that even though I feel that I have a wide variety of skills. I'm always looking to improve them. Mm -hmm. And so I attend 
almost every personal, I mean, professional development session that is being offered uh, just to continuously learn and engage. Um, so, you know, looking at service delivery, improving the services for students, uh, a lot of uh, intercultural per- professional development as well, I think is beneficial to work with, you know, diverse groups. Mm-hmm. And the college has so many offerings through PD. So that's great. Yeah. Um, what would you say is something that's challenging that you faced in your role? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think there are some student cases that were quite required quite a bit of attention Mm -hmm. and some of the support they needed was beyond the scope of what was available to them. Okay. So, but I'm very thankful that I have a a great team that I collaborate with to draw on, um, you know, get some advice on how best to support the students. Because like I mentioned that sometimes their experiences are out of their own control as well. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's difficult. If a student comes for support and it's like the resources aren't there or they're unavailable, it makes it really, really challenging, but I'm glad to hear that you have a great team that is supporting you along the way. That's awesome. What gives you hope for the future? <laughs> it's a loaded question, but what gives you hope? I have a very supportive, um, manager, director, and teammates. So I think there's a lot of scope for professional development and we're developing working groups on topics that I'm personally very interested in, especially like equity, diversity, inclusion. So I'm really looking forward to how we're going to come together and make the positive changes. Absolutely. And I think working groups helps it so that the initiative gets pushed forward a little bit faster Definitely. as opposed to having, say, a larger committee yeah. of people. I think a working group kind of gets things done. Definitely. So that's good. And we have a lot of diverse experience and skills. So coming together, we're supporting each other's personal and professional development. It sounds like you have a great background in justice and social justice. Can you tell me a little bit more about the drivers for your passion in supporting international students and supporting equity, diversity and inclusion initiatives? So in my current position, this is the first time that I'm supporting such a large load of international students. I have experience working with them before, mm-hmm. but in at Conestoga, it's, it's a different landscape. And I hear their narratives and I see that, you know, there's a lot of challenges for them coming to a new country, new systems. Um, you know, just the other day, a student was telling me that she didn't even know what a double double was. Right. Oh, wow. Like at Tim Hortons. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and these things we, you know, kind of take, take for granted. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a part of our everyday and just having the confidence to ask or understand because she didn't want to come off as, you know, mm-hmm. not knowing because mm-hmm. it's just like very normative conversational piece. Right. Yeah. So it's those little things, little to us maybe. Mm-hmm. Right. But big to them that really I hear every day examples like this and it's just kind of accumulated for me to understand that you know they they need that support they're here and they are part of Canada's future Mm -hmm. so it's it's definitely in my role and position to help them find that sense or develop that sense of belonging and um understand if this is home for them in the future and they are going to transition into the workforce, how can I support them in that? Mm -hmm. Everyone is from everywhere. So it's one of those things that, yeah, definitely. So that's a great story and I'm glad you shared it with us. Thank you. We mentioned earlier about the juggling act of the stage of your career right now. How would you say leadership or senior leaders can support people at that level of their career right now, having the juggling act happening. Any advice? Definitely. I, I think offering flexibility mm-hmm. is really helpful because there are some moments that are out of our own control. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's always helpful for senior leaders to be empathetic and accommodating. Mm-hmm. Um, and knowing that, you know, we are striving our best to show up and be there, but um Sometimes we also need that support. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think flexibility is key, especially with young children. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, any advice that you would give to your younger self? So today, here we are, but what would you say to yourself, your 10 year ago self? I just, I would tell myself not to stress out too much. Okay. Um, we, I think everybody, most of us have ideas that by a certain age or a certain stage in our life, we want to see ourselves somewhere, you know, that we've kind of envisioned, but there's a lot of things that sometimes unfold or present themselves in ways that we should take advantage of and explore. Uh, so, you know, just keeping an open mind and heart and carrying myself with grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love that advice. Cause I mean, thinking about my younger self, I was super stressed out all the time. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, um, in terms of next steps, what's next for you career wise? Uh, well, I hope to secure something permanent and, <laughs> um, uh, work on some projects that I'm passionate about. Um, so hopefully the opportunities will come and again, just keeping the open mind and heart to see how things unfold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just following up on that, what's a passion project of yours? What are you thinking? Um, looking at, you know, the experiences of international students. Mm -hmm. uh, so kind of delving into that, there's different pockets. So there's so much you can explore with that topic. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, so my signature question, what advice do you have for students just generally? Okay. Um, I always encourage students to, you know, stay resilient, explore different opportunities. And my favorite is to develop transferable skills. Mm -hmm. No experience or program of study is ever a waste. Uh, sometimes students will say to me, oh, like, you know, this program is not what I wanted or want anymore or what I thought it would be or it's not going to help me. But I, I truly believe that every experience and every class is like a building block and it all kind of pieces together and comes together. So mm -hmm. great advice. Thank you for that. What an inspiring conversation. Thank you for listening to this episode of Let's Talk Careers. If you like this episode and want to hear more, follow us on Spotify and subscribe to us on YouTube. See you in the next one.